Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another special rendition of our pre-code horror uh, picks for Halloween here. Uh, if you guys don't know, uh, we're doing a special video series on the channel with uh, Drew from Como Comic Books and Ryan from Automatic Comic Books. And uh, this video right here where we're picking three uh, artists from the pre-code horror days and we are picking some of their most iconic books and also some underrated, maybe undervalued books that they also did as well. And we have those broken up into uh, a three-part series for each of those segments. So be sure to hop over to those channels uh, to check out our other picks. But this video that we're, uh, we have here today are, is uh, another installment of the iconic books uh, for our respective artists. And um, yeah, I guess before we totally start, uh, you know, maybe I can just say hi to Drew and Ryan and say thanks, guys, for hopping on the channel again. Hey, yeah. thanks for having me. Always excited to be here. Yep. Yeah, I was uh, looking forward to doing this one, uh, this series of videos again this year. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, the spirit of Halloween, so it felt appropriate to talk about some Halloween PCH books. And, uh, you know, the, the first slide that we have for you guys here today is uh, my artist that I had to... Uh, pick here, which is, of course, Bernard Bailey. And his iconic book that I have for this uh, video is this one right here, Weird Mysteries number four from April of 1953. The classic skull cover slash guy who has an ant body and a face and a lot of weird, just creepy stuff going on with this one. Uh, you know, again, we, we've been uh, talking about on some of the other videos where it's, it's funny with PCH where uh, you get it. I understand why people think these these covers are crazy. Would it be one that I personally would want to have on my shelf? I'm not so sure because this one actually uh, creeps me out. Uh, but it is a very, very cool skull and it is a cool um, dagger to sort of see th through it. And, you know, you're sort of getting that Ant-Man perspective. Uh, with this guy who's been shrunken down in size. So uh, a lot of really, really cool things going on with this one. And uh, it shows that, uh, you know, people think that it's cool because, you know, you go into the numbers there, 53 universal um, blue labels for this one, a 3.0 last sale for 7,200, just to get into the, the club, basically, a 5.5 five for 12,000, and then a 7.0 uh, selling as a personal best for this. At forty three thousand two hundred. Now, I do think that that seven zero might have been a pedigree label. Forgot to notate it here, but still, I mean, uh, you know, top almost top of census uh, for this one. We're you know high or mid five figure range, and this is just one of those ones where you know with uh, Bernard Bailey, just people just go crazy for his very disturbing uh, comic book covers, and uh, I don't know what it is, but this one is is very very disturbing, but. Uh, you know, I'll throw it off to you guys. What do you guys think about this one? I mean, I, mean, I know we, we talked a little bit before the recording about this, but uh, you got any uh, feelings on this one? Maybe Ryan or Drew? So you heard it here first. First appearance of Ant-Man. is uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, so if, It's a you know, key book. It, it's a key book. <laughs> key, key book. Uh, but, but yeah, we, we were talking about this a little bit before we, we started recording, and I, and I had made the comment. I was like, I, I can respect this book for what it is. This book grosses me out. Like it's just something about it, you know, like with the, it's the way that the ant's face is drooling and stuff like, I'm like, I get it, but I don't want it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. uh, but like, there are a few pre horror covers out there like that, that, I mean, I, I fully respect why they are what they are and why they are so expensive and popular, but man, this one and Bernard Bailey, like, I mean, we talk about LB Cole, like, you know, he was like on some drugs or something like that when he was making yeah. his like, I'm curious what was going on in Bernard Bailey's head. That like he came up with some really <laughs> creepy imagery mm -hmm. that he put onto these onto these uh, uh, covers. But uh, but yeah, it, it, you commented that if it was a pedigree, it was it was a it was a pedigree copy. And I mean, second highest graded, like top of census, I believe, is seven point five. And the, the interesting thing is that that seven point five sold two years ago for thirty one thousand. Oh, wow. You know, and then you had the seven zero two years later beating that by 12 grand, you, you know, right. I mean, that just, that shows you how much demand is really there at these, for these really big key books, because you can definitely get lost in the, I don't know, in the, in the, the noise of a lot of like the, the pre-code horror that's out there, but like the, the iconic books, the books that really like grab your attention and people recognize 
I mean, they're, they're, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say they're always going to be like that, but it doesn't seem like it's slowing down anytime soon. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the ground has just shifted so much on pre-code horror in the last three to five years. Um, it, it's unbelievable. So whoever sitting on that seven, five is, uh, probably going to find themselves in a pretty good financial position if they ever decide to, uh, to flip that. But looking at this to just kind of go off some of the comments you guys made, I think what is so disturbing about this is it's so unnatural. Just an ant with a humanoid head. The skull is not really a human skull. I mean, it kind of looks like one, but you know, you look at the teeth, those aren't human teeth. So it's like, well, you have no, basis in reality other than it looks like there's like a little farmhouse off in the distance it's like you know if this is going out on out in the field what the hell's going on in that house it's just like nothing is you have no respite in this everything is wrong and off and just yeah i, I wouldn't i wouldn't not buy this one if i had the opportunity and the deal was right but it's going in a box. I'm never looking at it uh, because <laughs> ew. Uh, <laughs> but no, it's it's one of those top tier pre code horror books for a reason, and it's just that's why it's it's icky. It's weird. It's uncomfortable. Um. So yeah, I you can't not pick it. But why did you have to pick it? <laughs> Because those sales numbers, I know they, they suggest that it is iconic. And, and I would say, you know, I mean, I, I do, you know, we've seen a lot of skulls drawn from various artists and various renditions and stuff. And if I just look at the skull, I, I really do like how that skull is depicted. It gives me like a, uh, not just a skull, but it, it kind of feels like pirates of the Caribbean skull, right? Like it's, it's got that. I don't I don't know what the difference is there. But there's something in it, you know. It's a happy there's, little skull. Yeah, yeah. There's some something kind of fun about it, you know. So, yeah, uh, iconic book, uh, number one for Bernard Bailey in this video. But uh, let's jump to the next book here, the next iconic book. I believe yeah. uh, this one is a Drew pick. Uh, Drew, why don't you uh, kind of talk about this one here? For sure. Yeah, my artist was Don Heck. Um, he worked on. If you've seen the other videos, sorry to repeat this, but he really worked on about two main titles for the pre-code horror era. It was horrific and then uh, Weird Terror, um, both of them from the same publisher. And this cover, while it's not horribly expensive, it's one of his more iconic covers because there's just not a lot of things out there. Like this shrunken head element is not something that's just beat to death in pre-code horror. I mean, and then you put a shrunken head on a pike and you know, by a fire and it's just, you know, you get a lot of those elements we talk about um, with, with pre-code horror. And it also has that same, just right up in your face feel that so many of Don Heck's other covers um, have that we have talked about or will talk about if you haven't seen those videos yet. But I think what really gets me about this cover is that the eyes look like they're still alive. You know, I mean, they're, they're green, they're focused. They're looking right in at you. Um, it's just, it's disturbing. So um, that's why I had to pick it again, March, 1953. So that's kind of been a, a, a through line with a lot of our covers is that, that, 53 time period is when things just started getting crazy sales. This one's not going to break the bank. I actually, um, these were the sales I wanted to highlight to show that it's kind of just hanging in there. It's not getting crazy. Like some books are really having some good value bumps, but back in December 15th of 22, we had a four or five that sold for under 600 bucks. Then we had, a five five in January sell for under eight hundred bucks at seven eighty, but just a half a grade below that four five at a four zero in June it sold for just over four hundred bucks. So this is again another affordable issue, and the reason I wanted to highlight that is that pre code horror can 
yes, absolutely devastate your bank account um, if you go certain directions. But there are still places out there, books, titles, artists that you can get into and kind of dip your toe into the, the category without, you know, sacrificing your financial security. Um, and, and a 4 you're talking about, you know, a hundred bucks a point right there. I think that is a great value, um, you know, for somebody looking to get in um, to PCH and, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of unsettling, but it's, it's not gross. You know, um, if we're going to use the, the wall test, um, as a metric, I, I feel like yeah, this, know, this one head is, on a pike is safe. It's not, it's not that bad, right? Yeah. But you know, I mean, it's a tasteful head on a pike. There's no, yeah. there's no dripping or anything, you know, it's very, it's, cl it's clean horror. Yeah. But does, does grandma come in? Like you're talking about grandma in the other videos. Yeah. Like, she going to be like, it kind of looks, you know, like grandma. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's freak, freak out a little bit. You got that on the, on the show. Yeah, yeah. This is what grandma looks like after a weekend of babysitting the kids. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I'm honestly, I'm surprised that that's what that book goes for. Right. You know, I, I, I would have thought it would be much, you know, much higher than that. And, um, but you, you do also, it makes you understand why some of the, you know, and I'm air quoting higher grade copies because when we're talking golden age, it's always weird like that. But why they do end up going for as much as they do, because I mean, I was looking at the, the census here and highest graded copy is an 8.0. It has never come up for sale uh, mm -hmm. publicly, at least not on GPA. You know, there's not a recorded sale. Highest recorded sale was a 7.0 and that sold in 2007. For oh, wow. For $263, you know, and it's an and it's a Crippen copy. And so like, that's where you, you understand some why when certain books come up for sale in certain <laughs> grades, why they get the attention they do. Because if you, if it's something you've been waiting for, or like you're trying to put together like the best horrific run that's out there, uh, you know, you're like, well, I can buy this one or I can wait another 15 years, you know? And then you just, you get a couple people that feel that way and you start seeing some really, really wild numbers that that can pop up there for for books like this mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's a it's it's definitely a, a cool one and it, it's funny with the iconic thing you know we're we're telling we're, we're saying that the iconic covers but then the, you know it's not always has it doesn't always have to translate to the values here because this is one that i've seen in person i've probably seen this one twice and there is something very striking about the horrific title at least in my opinion like my experience like you know you go to somebody's wall and they got a bunch of books on it and then when i see horrific there in this cover as well it always sort of pops out amidst the big wall books and and so there's something is iconic with it it's like maybe it's very simple like you said like it's very clear like okay here's the things you know pike on a head with flames and stuff but I mean, simple can also be kind of iconic. So uh, definitely a cool Don Heck pick for that reason. Yeah. And I tell you guys, just full transparency, I struggled. I'm like, is this the iconic book or is this the undervalued pick? And I mean, just flip a coin and, and I came down with, I'm going to put it on the iconic list. But yeah, it, it's definitely could go either way. All right. Well, let's jump here to... The third book that we have, and that is uh, one of Ryan's picks. Uh, Ryan, why don't you tell us about this one here? All right. So if you have watched the other uh, iconic videos, I, you know, someone might think that I was going to put Mass Comics number two here. And I the, I didn't just because I had already talked about, you know, Mass Comics number one. I wanted it's to. It's because he hates Mass Comics. Also, also because, yeah. It, Mass he Comics didn't want to hear me talk about how Mass 2 is right. better than Mass right. 1. Far superior. So I, I decided to go a different route. And uh, I just because I wanted also something that had a little bit of a different feel to it than some of the other covers. And uh, I've, I've talked about this in, in other videos where one of the things for me with pre-code horror is. Like if I'm if I'm looking at a whole bunch of covers, you know, all next to each other, or if I'm flipping through that that Gerber photo journal, like which things grab my attention? And you know, I haven't actually mentioned it yet. So the artist that I had was LB Cole, and so it's I think it's if you know LB Cole, you know this is you know, this is an LB Cole cover. But um, yeah, I had LB Cole, and I picked Ghostly Weird Stories number one twenty two. Now, I think the numbering and the long title maybe hurt this one a little bit, you know, because it's just like. 
you, you get that sometimes where you have these, you know, like the blue bolt run where it jumps around and kind of how it's named and the numbering and it's really high numbers. And I think it just throws people off a little bit, but this, this cover here from LB Cole, just, it immediately grabs your attention and it has multiple elements on it. That's one of the things I really like with it is it's not just a straight horror cover. It's almost more of a sci-fi cover than anything. Like if you, if you took this like zombie or, or dead, you know, uh, astronaut character out of the front, it would much more be like a, a sci-fi cover. You've got this ship that crashed in the background and you've got various planets and you're on a full, you know, some type of alien world, that kind of thing. Uh, and so, but that's one of the things that I really like about it is that it's not, it's not simply a, a horror cover, which is what you often get with, with LB Cole. You've got that, that mix of, of sci-fi and horror. Now it is a, it is a pretty pricey book, but not, not to the extremes of some of the, the other books that I've, that I've talked about, like mass comics, number one, you know, you're having the, the record sale being over a hundred thousand dollars where the high sale for, for this book was six thousand three hundred dollars for a you know for a six point five. Now there is an eight point five that's out there. That is the top of census, and the highest uh, graded copy that has ever sold was an eight O cosmic airplane that went for nine hundred and twenty dollars twenty years ago. <laughs> so uh, back in two thousand and three. So that's one of those things that it's always it is always really interesting to look at those those historic sales, you know, and look back 10 years, 20 years and just see how how affordable, you know, relatively some of this stuff was. Now, granted, if you looked at Amazing Spider-Man 1, Amazing Fantasy 15, those were a lot cheaper then, too. And so it's not like it's just pre-code horror, like things are just more expensive now. But I, I mean, this cover, you I, I feel like you can't argue that with the, the orange and the yellow and, the you know, this like this. uh dead astronaut on the cover like it grabs your attention it really grabs your attention right away you've got you know the death ship you know on there like i feel like that makes you want to open it up learn what happened you know what what was the story that was going on in here uh so yeah so that's why this was the the iconic book for me it has just all those elements and just something that really really you know grabs you if you were if you were going up to a newsstand i feel like you would you would have to buy this book yeah, absolutely. I, this is definitely one of those ones where, you know, uh, I, I think we, we've talked about it before in other videos, like LB Cole has such a, a very specific sort of style. And even though I think unanimously people who collect, you know, Golden Age stuff love LB Cole, I, I would still sort of say it's an acquired taste, but I feel like this one, like, I, I don't know, even for me personally, I think that this cover is so, so cool. It's so badass. Um, and you mentioned like the space horror element, it, you know, uh, space horror is some of the best type of horror. Like, you know, you think of movies like Event Horizon and things like that. Like it's it's the most creepy of like in a lot of ways, you know. The, and so I think this cover has a lot of really cool stuff going on with it. And uh, and and the ghostly weird stories and, and even like, you know, some of your other picks with like the Blue Bolt ones, like these ones sort of feel like almost lesser known or less talked about and stuff. And like you said, it's like, even though this is still a really expensive book, like dare I say that this one hasn't seen its heyday yet, you know? Um, so kind of a, a really cool one and a very, very iconic book. But uh, Drew, what do you think about this one? Yeah, the thing I like about this book is it's like, it's the next step in science fiction that like ec never took so you've got weird science you got weird fantasy which are kind of the key sci-fi space-based um titles that come to my mind when i'm thinking pre-code horror those are all very sanitized very clean shiny um space adventures you know everything's bright everything's well lit your monsters are kind of cartoony um this is more like the realistic side scary side of space travel of sci-fi it's not you get there and there's a creature you get there and you know you're fighting ufos this is something happened and you're trapped in a spacesuit floating through space or you know your ship comes apart you know to me this is very relatable realistic and that's just based on the assumption that you know this wasn't a zombie astronaut or something they got blown out of an airlock or, or something like that so um and one thing i've noticed it's like a lot of these lb cole covers have that really 
lean in on the red or you know this one's kind of more orangey and yellow but you know those are from like a uh, psychological level those are colors that we associate with like attention right that's why anytime you go and into a store and it's a sale or it's a clearance sale or something it's red and yellow it's it, it psychologically stops humans so seeing that and then the contrast uh with you know the greens and everything else and the blacks that are going on there in there it just you can't help but stop and check this cover out and a lot of that star comic stuff that he did is kind of out there for me but this is one i've always been drawn to which is you know not surprising since i hate my bank account and uh <laughs> You know, that's fine. But no, I, I love this book. I was excited to see that it made the list so we could talk about it. And and I, th I thought it was interesting that, uh, uh, Mickey, that you mentioned Event Horizon because shout out to my dad who took me to that when I was way too young and it <laughs> scared the crap out of me. <laughs> in the, the Like I saw that in the theater and oh my gosh, that movie is terrifying. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, that kind of wraps up uh, our three picks for iconic pre-code horror books, uh, at least for this video. If you guys don't know, we have two other parts that took place on uh, Drew's channel, Coma Comic Books, and Ryan's channel, Automatic Comic Books, as well. If you guys want to see our other six books that we picked for these artists, uh, be sure to head over to uh, those channels as well. I'll put links in the description, and uh, you know, you guys can navigate over if this is the first one that you've seen, or maybe this is the second or third one, but uh, be sure to watch the other videos. And um, also we will have a underrated uh, installment of this video series as well uh, that you guys should uh, tune into if you haven't found it yet. But uh, gentlemen, thanks so much for coming on the channel today. Um, Anything Absolutely, else to man. say? I mean, we'll do the thing where we do the awkward. Anything else to say? And you guys say no. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but no, I'll, I'll just reiterate. Thanks again for having uh, me, and you know, we all love this stuff, and I look forward to doing this. Hopefully, we'll keep doing it uh, next year, and and so on and so forth. So, appreciate yeah. it. Pre code yeah. horror to the moon. Yeah. Yeah. And remember, the true horror of PCH books is looking at your bank account after you buy them.